That's it. That's how we say comfort around here. If you're able to stand, amen. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, after the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other went to look in the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came from heaven. And going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and he sat on it. I see, I see humor sometimes in the gospel. Can you imagine an angel coming down to earth? Flipping over a stone it took six Romans to roll over and sit down on it. He just sat right there. but used it like a chair. Amen. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, don't be afraid. I so appreciate angels that show up down here that the first thing they tell us scared people is don't be afraid. For I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. Hey, he's not here. He's not here. I said he's not here. He's risen as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. I would love for all of us to have that moment in life where it's our first time to hear the Easter story. I was brought up hunting eggs for Easter, didn't know anything about no resurrection, didn't know about the crucifixion, didn't know about Jesus. I just knew on Easter. And it breaks my heart. There are a lot of kids, that's all they know about is just you get eggs on that day. And that's kind of a weird deal. When do you get eggs? I'll leave it alone just for a little bit. I can't get it on my soapbox right now. Father, teach me to pray. Teach me to talk to you. God, help us walk through this understanding of Easter, the revelation. Let people leave here with help, hope, God, and healing in their bodies. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give me a big one. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. I'm such an apologist for Easter. I actually love, I, I like holidays. I like, I like birthdays. I like all the holidays that come down the line as a rule. Most of them, I usually skip over a Halloween. Don't pay much attention to it. I never have uh, since I've been born again. But this thing about Easter, Christmas and Easter. For most of us, Christmas is a bigger and it's a greater holiday. So today we get together, we, we have gifts, we give out. But there would not, never be a Christmas if they, it wouldn't matter if it had not been for an Easter. The Easter is the important day. It, yeah, him showing up here was important. But Christmas, if Easter had not happened, Christmas would have no meaning to it. It would just have been a baby born in Bethlehem. If Easter had not happened, Christmas would be nothing more than a sweet-sounding fable. If Easter is not true, then Christmas is only the story of an obscure baby born in an out-of-town, out-of-way town, already forgotten in a land 2,000 years ago. It is the great miracle of Easter that gives Christmas its true meaning. Perhaps there is no mystery in the universe so monumental as God dying a death of shame to redeem mankind. The more I understand it, you know, in the beginning, Adam and Eve uh, sinned in the garden. You know about that. I know many of you are without sin. I, I, I'm so glad that the perfection showed up here today. That's good to have perfect people in church. I'm lying. I know y'all. You know me. So when I look at this and I think about what Adam and Eve did, and the, and the Scripture says that God took a skin and he covered them. We believe it to be a lamb. And we walk through the Word of God and we realize that there was a lamb for a man. Then later on, they took the lamb, the blood of the lamb, and they put it on the doorpost in the book of Exodus. The death angel passed over. He became a lamb for the family. Then later on, they started... Uh, using this Passover as a lamb for the whole nation. And then when Jesus walked among and John the Baptist saw him, John got excited. He was his cousin, known him. Be, he, be careful with this. People say familiarity breeds contempt. It doesn't. It doesn't. I understand being familiar. I'm fa I, I've been familiar. With my, my mom has known me for 58 years, and I still love my mama. Amen. It doesn't have to be that way. I, I get nervous as a pastor. I've been pastoring 26 years. Will you ever get so familiar with me that it just leads to, to contempt? I know who he is. I know how fast he drives. I know how, well, Rocky, I look at you. You've known me 30 years. My goodness, you, you, you shouldn't even be here. Uh, you know, so, so you think about familiarity, breeding contempt. People say, well, I, that's, that's not even in the Bible. It's not even in the Word of God. 
Uh, so, so be careful with this. In other words, you can still maintain the respect and honor for people yeah, out of position, out of love for them, even though you may know some things about them. The Scripture says that, that when, when John saw him, he was his cousin. And he said, Behold, not just the one that takes away the sin of a man, not just the one that takes away the sin of a family, not just the one that takes away the sin of a nation. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that America may be getting better, but I'm ready for the world to get better better. This morning, 160 people were killed in a, in a bombing in Sri Lanka. Uh, Evil-minded, devilish people. That's, that's, it, it's, say, it's satanic to understand bombing churches because somebody in there believes in God. It's a heartbreak that we've got going on, but it's never stopped. It's never going to stop. Matter of fact, I woke up this morning knowing before I turned on the news there would be a bombing somewhere today that somebody was being a wicked in, in this world against other people. I knew it was coming. Perhaps again, there is no mystery in the universe so monumental as God dying a death of shame to redeem mankind. But it's not only Christians who can get mixed up and messed up. The world in general, when I think about how we look at, at Christ and other things, the Easter answers a lot of questions. It answers the question of doubt. It answers the question of loneliness. It answers the question of death. There's something about this day you need to grasp hold of it. Modern men and women ask with great sincerity, how can I know which religion is the right one? That's a good question. I, I, this, is a, this is posed to me quite a bit. People even ask me, Pastor, what denomination are you? Are you a Baptist? Are you Pentecostal? I, I've never been in a denomination. I've never met one that would have me. I looked at their criteria and realized I wouldn't want to be in theirs. And I'm not being mean. I just like being a believer in Christ. Amen. Amen. So that, that's where my heart is being. But it's a good question. The average person faces a supermarket of religions from which to choose. Well-stocked shelves and wonders. It's on TV now. You, you, you can pick religions out. And there is only one problem with all these religions. All the bottles of these religions have been poisoned except one. How can we find the right one, the safe bottle? How can we do that? Listen, there's Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Baha faith, Taism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Slavic, Neo-Paganism. I didn't make this up. Wicca, Satanism, Hellenism, Jehovah Witness, Mormon, Scientology, Unitarian, Confusionism, which is where I'm at right now, and, and Christianity. These are all religions. And not to mention, <laughs> these are others I looked up, the, the Church of Euthanasia. The church of the flying spaghetti monster. The church of the subgenius. I, I know some that go to that church. Dudism. And last, thirstyism. I spoke with a young man. I told you this story a, a couple of weeks ago. Had a t-shirt on. It said, I'm going to hell in all religions. And I had to start talking to him. I had to ask him about it. Because I've often said it to you about hell. Hell's a forgotten place for forgotten people who forgot. Hell, 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 my friend, we forgot about hell. Hell's just forgotten. We say go to hell all the time. Oh, hell. We, we, that's like one word in Texas. How I many you know that? Oh, hell. Amen. So, so here, here we, we've forgotten. Hell's a forgotten place for forgotten people. You and I have friends and family in hell. And we won't talk about it. We don't want to mention it. And perhaps it's our fault, whose fault, whatever. But it's our, it's our witness that's got to change. we got to reach people. Amen? It's a forgotten place for forgotten people who forgot. What they forget? That there was ever a hell to start with. And if you forget there's ever a hell to start with, you'll start living like hell. And then you say, well, I don't know if I really believe there's going to be a hell. Act like you do for a while. Because your belief will affect your behavior. How you believe is how you're going to behave. If you really believe there's a hell to shine and a heaven to gain, it begins to affect you. Amen. It has sober you up. Can I get an amen? The one fundamental difference of all of these bottles that I see, they, they all got ethical standards. They all got, uh, uh, they all got stories. Many of them have miracles in them. But there's one difference in them. One fact that sets Christianity apart from every other religious system. And you have to go to the tombs of their founders of the great world religions and give a roll call. Muhammad, here. Moses, here. Buddha, here. Confucius, here. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, no answer, no answer, because he's not there. The tomb, 
This is what, this is what you find out. It's empty. Like the angel said, well, he's he not here. He's not here. I, yes, yeah, yeah. If you're like me, I show up at people's houses all the time without calling. Why call and ruin a good surprise? I just like showing up. I mean, I may be on my, my Harley or my hot rod or something. I just show up. Many of you know that I do this. And I, I'll ring the doorbell. And every now and then I'll get a, he's not here. Dave? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that one. That was an old. Quit, quit. Son, it's Easter. <laughs> he's not here. He said, you're not going to tomb. He's not here. They went in and looked. He wasn't there. They went and told Peter and the rest of them. They came and looked. He wasn't there. No answer. See, listen. So which is the right, which is the right bottle to pick, Pastor? How can you be sure? Just go to the one whose founder rose from the dead. That religion has got to be a true one. Which bottle in the religious supermarket is pure? Just drink from the one that says living water on it. And I'm telling you, that's going to be the one. How about the question of guilt? We all face guilt. We all deal with guilt. Uh, when I mentioned hell to some of you, all of a sudden guilt came all over you because you started thinking about people that you loved that you were not able to witness to or talk to. And I go through the same thing. Uh, an aunt who took her own life before I could talk to her. Uh, a grandmother that I did get to lead to Christ. Uh, another grandfather who died who I didn't get a chance to talk to. I live with guilt. You live with guilt of bad choices or a choice that went bad. You didn't know it was going to be bad at the time, but it did. All these things flood over us. Someone has said that no doctrine of the Scripture is so easy to prove as the doctrine of human depravity. I told someone the other day, this is not evolution. Men do not evolve. We devolve. You leave us alone long enough, we'll be the most stupid people you've ever met. We can do the dumbest things. You say, now, Pastor, you can't. Check the Internet out. Look at that, that YouTube thing. I'm telling you, you'll see the dumbest stuff going on. You, you can't believe that man could give you self. We don't evolve. We don't get smarter. I want to apologize to the monkeys. Can I get an amen? I'm telling you what. They've gotten smarter. We've gotten dumber. Depravity is all around us. You pick up a newspaper, turn on the TV, listen to the radio, uh, look on the Internet. Think of the people you work with every day or better yet. Look in the mirror. The evidence is so plain that no honest person can deny it. The reason we feel guilty is because we are. We are guilty. We have hurt. We have done wrong. Uh, for all have sinned, the Scripture says, and come short of the glory of God. We're never going to mess up to that. There's no one righteous, not even one. Well, is there any hope for us? Absolutely. That is, there is no one who can claim to have lived an absolute perfect life. The record of our failure haunts us every day and night. It whispers to us in the nighttime. It shares with us here. Again, no one is born without sin. No one lives without it. No one can claim to be totally free from it. The question is not, am I a sinner? Because the answer is going to be yes. The answer is, how do I get rid of the guilt I feel in my soul? What am I to do? There are three primary ways people handle their guilt problem. First thing is, people try to do good. Oh, there's do-good clubs everywhere. You drive up and down the road, there's do-good clubs. And I'm not against do-good clubs. I think they do good. But they can't get rid of your guilt. They'll never take it away. I'm telling you, the, the United Way, uh, mowing people's lawns, doing this, that, and the other, that makes you feel better, but it's not going to take care of the guilt. The second way is to try to pursue pleasure. Oh, we have pleasure pursuing people. We love pleasure. <laughs> we do. It's just in our nature, man. We just like that. But there has to be a time that we put down the old man and say, enough is enough. For these people, life is a nonstop fraternity party. Everything is happiness, lights, music. They laugh, they talk, they keep on moving. They are in perpetual motion because they fear that if the lights ever are turned off, if the laughter ever stops, if the noise ever dies down, they'll have to hate, face the hard facts of life. And that's why many turn to, and, and, and I have experience these alcohol drugs pills uppers downers artificial stimulants of every kind it's the only way they can deaden the inner pain that's inside third people try various religions well i'll try this religion this religion this religion you know i met somebody with a star of david a rabbit's foot and a cross and i said you're you're really working on it ain't you you know you 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 you're, you're nervous you don't know how this thing's going to go all these answers fail because they don't deal with the root of the problem which is sin that's our moral guilt that exists between all humanity and a holy God. Nobody can get around the issue. You can't be good enough to erase your guilt. You can't laugh enough to drown out your guilt. You can't pray enough to cover your guilt. Can't be done. So the only answer is Easter. It was the resurrection, my friend. Uh, Corinthians tells us in 15.3, 
Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. But that's only true because Christ rose from the dead. If Jesus is still in the tomb, then we are still in our sins. If Jesus did not rise, then the Romans and the Jewish leaders, they were right when they crucified him. If Jesus didn't come back from the dead, then Calvary was just another execution of a well-meaning but misguided religious leader. Without Easter, Good Friday isn't good. Can I be honest with you? I never like calling Friday Good Friday. To me, there's nothing good about it other than what came out for us. It was bad Friday to him. How about the question of loneliness? The scripture says that, I'll, I'll, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. How did he, why did he say it? Because the disciples, as I talked about Tuesday and Wednesday night, had already deserted him. He was going to make sure for the rest of our lives that we would never be without anyone. The scripture says, Matthew 28, 20, some of his last words, I'm with you always. Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you that you may boldly say the Lord is my help. How'd you get through it? The Lord helped me. Now yeah, you know all the way around it. I called you and I called you and I called you and I didn't get an answer, but the Lord helped me. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you that you may boldly say, how'd you get the, the Lord helped me. Pastor, you laid your bike down a couple of years ago. How'd you get up? The Lord helped me. Let me just tell you, how'd I get up this morning? The Lord helped me. Amen. I'm telling you, the older you get, the more you're going to understand that, right, sir? Amen. You're going to know the Lord helped you. You got through this day because of that. How about the question of death that I got to deal with so often? A man dies. Boy, Job asked a question, didn't he? Job is a contemporary with Genesis. So when you're reading your Bible, a lot of times you'll look way up here and say, well, Job way up here. But Job is back. He's he one of the oldest books in the Bible. Or as I used to call him back in the day, Job. It's tough. when If you, if you weren't raised in the Bible, if you weren't raised in Scripture, and you get to reading your Bible, they, they, some of these names mess you up, won't they? Open to Job, and you can't find Job. You found Job. But you couldn't find Job. Our English is funny. 4,000 years ago, he asked the question, if a man dies, will he live again? It's the greatest of all questions. It's the central question Easter was meant to answer. Every experience, every experience, the cold, clammy, waxing feeling of death, I have. There's no movement in the nostrils. No twinkle in the eye, no smile on the lips. Death feels terrible, unreal, unnatural. When we stand over the body of someone we love, we have, feel helpless. We feel angry. We feel defeated. We feel afraid. Those of you who have been with me a long time know that I've preached more funerals than anybody else that I know. I, I've stood by the... I, I often told God, God, I feel like at times you just send people to our church to send them out. Not to make y'all nervous if you're visiting, but, but it, just, it just seems like, you know, that a lot of people come here on their way out, you know, and don't it, Jay? Yeah, they, they, they stay here with us a long time until we can kick them out. Death is sober and it's frightening and terrifying. The Scripture calls it the last enemy. It's the last enemy. Deep in our hearts, we wonder, how will we do when our time comes to cross the great divide. I've told you that we got to learn to live well, but we also got to learn how to die well. We got to be able to face it and understand that it's just a transition. Easter was so important. Listen, David even said in the book of Psalms that he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He already knew that when he died, he would be in the house. For me, that means is that I, along with all those who have gone before me, am just outside the door of the fullness of God's grace and everlasting. I'm on my way. Every day, I'm a little bit closer there. A faith, listen, me church a faith that doesn't help you when you're dying won't be much good when you are living when Jesus walked out of the tomb the people of God walked out with him I, I'll, I'll talk about this later but the scripture says when he came out they came out there was something about the resurrection that did something uh, you know I don't know a lot of the old songs uh, but I do remember a little bit of one song up from the grave he arose don't make me get into my baritone here Amen. The scripture said, or the song said, with a mighty triumph over his foes. That's what he did. The, the empty tomb says he's risen. The disciples say he's risen. The church of Jesus says he's risen. All creation says he's risen today. I'm, I'm in agreement with all the church. I can show you my phone right now. It's lit up everywhere on here from, from messages from pastors that sent to me this morning. Amen. We're, we're praying you're going to have a good one. We're all in agreement. He has risen. Amen. So in what sense, what sense did Jesus destroy death? 
death. 2 Timothy 1.10 says, But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word translated destroyed means rendered powerless. It no longer has the power it once had. Before when men and women died, there was a fear of it. They were scared of it. What was going to happen on the other side? I stand on this side by faith, and I will continue to say it, by faith believing that the transition between here and there will be breathing out this air and breathing in that air. Many of your loved ones who I have loved and you love that are gone on, we will see them again. I say that in hope. This is what the Scripture tells me. When Jesus rose from the dead, he broke the power of death forever. And one day, death itself will die. It will absolutely will be no more death in heaven. So until that day, John eleven twenty six. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Now, that's not a doctrine. That's saying that one day we will transition. You don't want this body. You don't want this body. Oh, it was good when you were 30. But Kobe is wearing out. What's that on your chin, son? Is that gray? Oh, my goodness. It does. These bodies, well, you don't want to keep these bodies forever. You don't want to have, God's got a new body that's going to be made by him. Amen. And when these earth suits wear out and they're no longer good for us, he going, we're going to get to trade them in. Paul, uh, Philippians, Paul said to, for me to live as Christ, to die as gain. Let's pause, pause to consider this. To live as Christ, to die as gain. I, I gain. I guess if I told you, look, you give me a dollar, I'll give you ten. Every one of you be lining up to get your 10. Now, I'm not trying to get you to heaven too quick, but I'm telling you, once you figure it out in your head, it's an amazing thing. Let's pause to consider this bare fact surrounding Good Friday, Easter, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Did Jesus not die? Yeah. Was he not buried? Yeah. Did the women not weep? Yeah. Where then is our hope? It's Friday. Everybody say Friday. Friday, I'm going to talk about the crucifixion. We're going to talk about that for weeks. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you, there's so much good stuff in here. But Friday, say it again. Friday. On Friday, hell was having a ball. Friday, six hours on the cross after he said, it is finished. He put his head down. He gave up his spirit, gave it back to the Father. Hell began to rejoice. It was like the culmination of everything hell wanted. Let's make sure that he never resurrects Satan, but was, was espousing it and pushing it. Everything was moving forward. He got in the head of Judas. Judas betrayed him. The, the, the religious leaders rose up against him. The disciples thought he came as a lion, but first he came as a lamb. Now he's, he's dead. He's, he's laying in a tomb. Hell is rejoicing. It's Friday. Everybody say Friday. Somebody say Sunday's coming. Okay, it's Friday. Now, the disciples know in three days. At least they've been told. And you've been told a lot of stuff, but you forgot it. Every now and then it comes back to you. Oh, yeah. You ever get that oh, yeah moment? Oh, yeah. He said three days. But they ain't thinking three days. Now, they're scurrying for their life. If they crucified Jesus, and, and but Peter said, I'm going to be next. I cut off Malchus's ear. James and John are hiding. The disciples are hid. They're scared. First, first day. Hell's the joy. Second day, grave is excited. Woo, grave is excited. I still got my icy fingers in him. I still got him right here. Hell's rejoicing. Grave is excited. It's a wonderful thing. But by, by, by early Sunday morning, the, the, the demons were dancing around in the tomb, and they were taking selfies with Jesus' body. They were saying, hey, smile, Jesus. Oh, you can't because you're dead. <laughs> and they take it, and all of a sudden, the sun starts coming up. And a finger moves. And then two fingers move. And then three fingers move. And all of a sudden, they drop their iPhones. The only devils who use iPhones. I apologize. I'm sorry. So they, they dropped their phone. And, and it's like, oh, no. Hell was excited. The grave was excited. The demons were excited. And all of a sudden, Jesus come up from the grave. So listen to me. It's, it, it, so it's, it didn't rest on Good Friday or in the long hours or that lonely Saturday. Our only hope is found in what happened early on Easter morning. This is the good news. Everybody say good news. That death could not hold him, that the grave could not keep him, that he's Lord of life, the king immortal and eternal. How did he destroy death? He could only conquer death by entering the realm of death, yanking the keys from the hands of the devil, unlocking the door, marching out on Easter, triumph over the grave. Revelation 1.18 says, I'm the living one. I was dead. I was dead. 
And behold, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hell. I ain't scared of hell. I ain't scared of death. I've looked it right in the eyes so many times. And I'm not here trying to boast on me. I'm just telling you, the more I understand this gospel, the more I understand what Easter did. It took away my doubts. It took away my loneliness. It took away the fear of death. Sister Haver, this is the first Easter we've had without your dear husband sitting here with you. Mm. Can you imagine him now with short fingernails? <laughs> teeth, his own teeth. Oh, Jesus, help me. It's going to be amazing. Easter answered all my questions. If man dies, will he live again? Yes, yes, yes. It's the final answer to the greatest question, the deepest question, the final. All of us will face death someday. But for those who know Christ, death holds no fear. We're not afraid of the darkness, for Jesus is the light of the world. We don't fear the valley of the shadow of death. He's our guide. Yeah, we're going to pass, but we won't stay dead. He has the keys. Stand with me if you would. As a little boy, I remember people coming over and visiting my dad. Now, my dad's name was James. Some of them called him Barney. They say, hey, Barney, come go home with us. Come go home with us. Dad smiled and said, hey, I can't go today. I often thought to myself, Dad, what if you ever did just hop in a car with him and take off? Because most of them just saying it politely. But there's going to come a day we're going to hear our Savior say, Come and go home with me. Come and go home with me. We have this hope. I've studied other religions. The difference was this. I had an experience. And a man with an experience is never at the mercy of someone with an argument. You can argue all day long that your religion is this. Your religion. But I had an experience. Something that touched and shifted everything inside me. I couldn't deny it. I, I tried to. Because when you enjoy sin the way I did, I wanted to backslide. Because I knew, you know, God is it, so good. But I couldn't deny what he did. Jay, you often said it. Jesus ruins a really good sin. You might have really enjoyed it, but after a while, it's, it's not as fun as it used to be. And those watching online, understand, this day, loneliness, when you accept Him. And you know, what's the answer for loneliness? I've said it so many times. It's not having somebody else with you. If you're alone and they're alone, you get together, you walk alone together. Nothing changes. The answer to loneliness is direction direction we live among a people today that has lost their direction we need to find our direction we need purpose we need reason for whatever we're doing heads bowed and eyes closed one day we will leave this earth and we'll go to the house there'll be no more sin no more hatred no more hurt no more pain my hope is that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That God, we can get to a place in life where we don't sin as much. God, that we'll fight hatred. We'll fight all the isms, God, that have hurt mankind. To Father, may those who doubt, doubt no more. May those who wonder, is it true, find that all their questions are answered by the message of the cross and the resurrection today. Live in Jesus. Oh, you're alive, you're alive, you're alive. Be born anew in our hearts today. Lead us to the empty tomb. May we hear the angels declare, He's not here. He's not here. He is risen, as He said. Grant that we leave this place better than the way we came in. With your eyes closed and your heads bowed, because I don't know everybody here. Those watching on the Internet, you can do the same now. You say, Pastor... My life is not, it's not bearing fruit. I once knew Christ. I've, I've, I've slipped away from Him. 
And I know in my heart that this is my day. Just as I saw these two get baptized today and resurrect, I know this is a day that I give my life to you. And I say from this day forward, I'm going to serve you. Bet you, would you put your hand up now? Just put your hand up. Yeah, I got hands all over this building now. One, two, three, four, five. Just hold your hand up. Just put it up. Put it back down. Amen. That's all I need. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you in the back. Would you pray this with me? Risen Lord, touch my life. May I never be the same. I know I need you. I know without you, my life's a mess. Come into it. Fill me with your love. Push away the hatred, the unforgiveness. Help me release people. In Jesus' name, write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Let me live radically for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God a shout. You got to know that you meant it. You got to decide. I'm this is it. 2019, tired of messing around. I'm ready to serve God the rest of my life. To those of you in here that I've not seen in a while, I, I love seeing you. If it takes many years before I see you again, I'll be just as happy when I do. But if I see you more, it'd be a blessing to me. Be seated just for a brief moment as our servant leaders come up. I had a friend in college. Hold on, just a second. I had a friend in college named uh, Young Lee. He was from Korea. He was the Elvis Presley of Korea. Young Jung Lee. I played him ping pong all the time. I couldn't beat that Korean. <laughs> he was so good. But he'd grab a guitar and, 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 and just, this is on me, so let me go and say, he would sing. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. And he'd do it like this. Yes. And he's broken English. Jesus loves me. And I would get so many chills. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. You got to tell the kids that Jesus loves them. You gotta tell people Jesus loves them. You gotta get in your Bible and realize how much He loved you. And even on the cross, I, I'm so excited about the next few weeks. And I'm not. You can come if you want. I'm just telling you, I will preach a lot better because I, I. It's just Easter. You wait till we get to dig into the seven sayings from the cross, the last words of a dying man, get Golgotha. Amen. The skull, all the things that took place, the resurrection. Oh, I'm excited about the next few weeks. I'm talking Tuesday night, too. So be here on a Tuesday. If you need an envelope, amen. If you're giving with your phone, hold your phone up. You say, Pastor, I'm giving with my phone today. Hold your phone up. Let me see your phone. When they come by, show them your phone. That way they don't know you're not punking them today. Amen. Show them your phone. I'm giving on my phone today. How do you give on your phone? You can give on the app. There's all kinds of ways you can give on your phone. Amen. But everybody be a giver. Thank you for your faithfulness, David. Amen. Oh, oh, oh yeah, he said he want to make sure that if you got your phone, you make sure you tap that bucket so it sounds like something hitting it, you know, like the change. But I, I never understood that because I, dollar bills don't make a lot of sound. We don't want change. It's an expression. It's, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just put the phone in there. Uh, there is an egg hunt going on in the back. Uh, to, let's see, April 21st, Lift Ladies Ministry with Miss Diane. Miss Diane, lift your hand. If you guys are wanting to get involved, see Miss Diane. That's the 21st, which is today? Yep, today. 
I never know what day it is. I'm sorry. April 25th through the 27th. Uh, they're the Zions Lions. Jay, you want to say anything about that? Dun Dunner. Dun Dunner. Okay. <laughs> Get there. See Jay Bo if you have any questions afterwards. Uh, and that'll be the 25th through the 27th. They're going to Kerrville. Uh, May 4th, TLCC Ladies Ministry. Um, Saturday, May 4th, leaving Crosby at 9 a.m. to Galveston trip. See the flyer or ask Miss Marie. That'll be in the back. Uh, May 6th, we got your 6th, um, is going to be in, in New Caney. If you're military or your spouse is military, go. They just have the, Mr. Hood, you still helping out with that? Come on. Um, if you guys have any questions, ask Mr. Hood. It's just for, for the ex-military to be able to get together or current military and, and just have resources and, and fellowship. Um, May 19th is TLCC Family Picnic. After the second service, bring your own lunch, uh, games, watermelon, and fun provided. See Ms. Marley. Um, she's in, in the North Campus. If you have any questions, you can see Ms. Uh, anybody, I guess. Find somebody. They'll be able to explain it to you. Um, July 5th through the 7th, Kids Camp 2019. Save the dates. Uh, in the Wild, The Amazing Encounters with God. See Sister Marley for details, or you can ask um, Miss Sheila or anybody helping out with the kids. But it's going to be an incredible time. If you guys have some time, volunteer, help out our kids. Listen, our kids will never know what the gospel is unless they see it in our lives. Yeah. That's, that's just the reality. And unless we show up and we begin to explain and exhibit the things that they need to see, they won't live it out the way that we want them or intend them to. Amen? Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Did I miss one? Oh, my bad. I go feel ahead. like everybody was off. Go ahead, go ahead.